All right. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Salat wa salam ala Sayyidina al-Mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. All right. It's wonderful to be with you all today. And mashallah, alhamdulillah. Okay, so let's let's get started talking about our section, section 10 today. And the theme here, um, in my opinion, well, the theme that's really striking me here is a th the theme of not only defining belief, but defining hypocrisy and defining what is what we don't want to be. There is a lot of clarity in this section about what we don't want to be. And then there's also some clarity here about what we want to be and who we want to be. And so as we walk through Ramadan and, and turn our hands up and say, Ya Allah, make me a person that you love. Make me a person that loves you. Make me a person that lives this religion correctly. As we do that, we can see in this particular section a lot of guidance and uh, clarity around what we should be doing uh, in this way. So we're in Surat Al-Anfal. We started this yesterday. Mm, yes, they are, uh, sort of. I mean, I'm saving them to my story, and then I'm trying to save them so that we can put them on YouTube. But I have a team of volunteers who's taking care of that, and they are relying on me to upload it. So, Bismillah. All right, so if we get started, and, and we start... Let me see, I wanted to start with 53... I thought I was all set up to go. I wasn't. There we go. Bismillah. Okay. All right. So if we are starting um, on, pay, on verse 53, we see right away that um, it's sort of a, a principle of understanding to help us understand how we are to live in this world. And when we're complaining about anything, we should come back really to this to this uh, verse. That verse uh, fifty-three. I need my glasses. ذلك بأن الله لم يكن مغيرا نعمة أنعمها على قوم حتى يغير ما بأنفسهم وأن الله سميع عليم. So when you hear that and you know that, that's a lot of power there. That is because Allah will not change a favor which he had bestowed upon a people until they change what is within themselves. Indeed, Allah is all hearing, all knowing. Now, that's a, that's a powerful verse and it's really, um, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty, it's pretty, I mean, it's, it's, I would say that it's a little bit scary, actually, that if we want to be changed, if we want change, then what we have, to, we have to begin that change within ourselves. And this is a home so it's a whole people so we need to individually begin to change ourselves and and uh, so that we can reach out for the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in change and well Allah is helping us now with COVID uh, I'm hoping that because of the stress and strain on society that people are becoming more generous that people are becoming more open-hearted more generous with their emotions more generous with their thoughts more generous with their husnul zan more generous with their uh, money and their time. But this begins our foray in this uh, section today around looking at who do we want to be? Who do we want to work on being? And how do we want to make sure that we don't fall into the category of the hypocrites or those who are destined for hellfire reality? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and make us of those who are of the sabirin, of the sadiqin, of the zakirin, ismuka kathiran, etc. I'm going to go ahead and jump to verse 72. And, you know, just a reminder that I'm only jumping because of our time. But, I mean, much more beautiful would be for us to be able to sit down with this 
Quran verse by verse, really taking it in. Yeah, subhanAllah. Okay, 72. Now here we're going to start out our, our discussion today, or our, the second piece we're going to do. So now we know that we are the ones who have to change. So now we're going to learn who we have to be. Okay? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَهَاجَرُوا وَجَاهَدُوا بِأَمْوَالِهِمْ وَأَنفُسِهِمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَالَّذِينَ آوَى وَالنَّصَرُوا أُولَٰئِكَ بَعْضُهُمْ أَوْلِيَاءُ بَعْضُ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَلَمْ يُهَاجِرُوا مَا لَكُمْ مِنْ وَلَايَاتِهِمْ مِنْ شَيْءٍ حَتَّى يُهَاجِرُوا وَإِنِ اسْتَنْصَرُوكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ فعليكم النصر إلا على قوم بينكم وبينهم ميثاق والله بما تعملون بصير. So that's a pretty long verse. Um, indeed, those who have believed and have gone on hijrah or have emigrated, so moved forward. Really, we can say that that's moved forward today, and fought with their wealth, worked, struggled with their wealth and their lives for the sake of God, and those who gave shelter and aided, those who helped, they are allies one another. One of one another. Of course, this is, we are referring in the original to the Muhajir and the Ansar, but we need to be thinking about ourselves. But those who believed and did not emigrate, they did not go on hijra. For you, there is no guardianship. There's no protection until they emigrate. And so I want us to ask ourselves, what is the thing we have not done hijra with? This first lesson here is, Ya Jama'a, you need to believe and then you need to go on hijra. And today, the scholars have said there is no hijrah today. And people like Warathi and Muhammad have disputed the idea of Dar al-Islam, Dar al-Harab, saying that wherever a Muslim lives is Dar al-Islam. And especially in a place like the United States of America, England, Australia, places where we have the freedom to practice our religion, that we are here uh, in this place, uh, in, our, in our homes. So it's not about hijrah moving. Unless, of course, you're in a place, with a, in a job. What if you're in a job? And in that job, you're not able to practice. It's time to not quit, but to start looking for another job. Don't quit until you have another job. Be smart about it. But it's time to think, I want to surround myself and create, what do I need to do? But what is the thing, what is the hijra thing that we need to do? So that we are, we have the, the wilaya, we have the, the protection, the guardianship of one another and of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, so that's step one. That's step one. We believe, we go on, we go on hijrah, so we make hijrah. That's a long, we could talk about that for a very long time. What kind of hijrah do we have to make in this day and age? Hijrah from what? Hijrah from certain types of sin, hijrah from certain types of thinking, etc. And then also we struggle with our money and ourselves. So we have to be generous. We have to be generous with our money. It's Ramadan. Have you given a donation yet? Somewhere? In ourselves, our lives, are we using ourselves and our lives for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Are we living for God? Are we doing our best to fill our time in khair and goodness? You continue to the bottom of that page. Alladhina amanu wa hajaru wa jahadu fi sabilillah wa alladhina awa wa nasaru ulaika hum al mu'minun haqqa lahum maghfiratun wa rizqun kareem so, yes, Rabata has a zakat eligible program. You can see that at rabata.kindful.com. Click on the one that says zakat so we know what the zakat is specifically because we're very careful with our zakat money and that goes directly to the to needy people. And the rest of our programs are zakat eligible as well, but for the most part we are um we use the zakat money in the way of the Prophet in those early days of directly to people. Okay, walladhina amanu wa hajru. Okay, yes, so sorry, I just I got distracted by those who have believed and emigrated and fought in the cause of God and those who gave shelter and aided. So these people we just talked about, the ones who did believe and the ones who did do hijra and the ones who did struggle. Ula'ika uh, humul mu'minun haqqa. They are the true believers. Haqqan. Ya Allah, may, may we be of these who are mu'minun haqqan. What do you get if you are of the mu'minun haqqan? rizqun kareem. You get forgiveness and generous rizq. Generous provision from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, Tanil, inshallah. In the month of hijrah, I usually give a talk about hijrah. 
Yani here we have the uh, the we're learning we're learning here. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is teaching us in these verses. Who who are we supposed to be, and what will we get, and how do we become? How do we qualify as mu'minuna haqqan? Subhanallah. All right, let's continue. Sorry, I, I was thinking about how beautiful that is and how I hope that we can all be of the Mu'minun Haqqa. Now, immediately from Surah Al-Anfal, we move to Surah At-Tawbah. And in moving to Surah At-Tawbah, this is a very heavy surah. It's a very powerful surah. For, if you've ever tried to memorize it, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a different flavor. It's a very different flavor. There's a lot of strength in here and a lot of, of Allah's... Uh, um, powerful. I mean, Allah is the He's the strong. And here in Surah Tawbah, we're we're being taught about again what the things are that we don't that we want to avoid. So now we we entered into it, and we definitely that first verse. That first verse is so scary. That because bara'atun means they are innocent of God and his prophet, are innocent of those with whom you've made a treaty among the polytheists. But it's just that first phrase that scares me. Ya Allah, don't ever let us be of those who Allah or the Prophet Sallallahu would say they are innocent of us. Ya Allah, they are, they are disassociating them with us. They have nothing to do with us. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Now go to verse 11 in Surah At-Tawbah. I will find it here. And now after a page and a half of describing everything that is scary and what we don't want to be and the mushrikeen and the problems and things that people are doing that are wrong and they're killing and they're, they're, they're shuddik and there's, and there's, uh, from one thing to another, Allah says, فَإِنْتَابُ وَأَقَامُ الصَّلَى وَآتَوُ الزَّكَةِ فَإِخْوَانُكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ if they repent, anyone, no matter what they're doing, if they repent, but it's repentance doesn't stand alone. If they repent and establish prayer and give zakat, these come together. Then they are your siblings in religion. Your very sisters and brothers. Think about the people in the world that really matter to you, that you're really concerned to be close to you your sisters and brothers, the people you really feel com feel comfortable with. No matter who, how far they were from you before, when no, that person who is causing chaos and causing havoc, I mean, today in the United States, when personally, when I see the Islamophobic movement and their anger and their guns and everything, it's, it's scary. But that same person that is spewing hate, if they believe and establish prayer and give zakah, that's my brother. That's my sister. And we will be together on this path. And it will be beautiful. May Allah guide all of them. We should be in Ramadan. Our dua is answered. We should be asking Allah, Allah guide every Islamophobe. Guide them all to the straight path. Guide them all to the straight path, Ya Rabbi. And, and let them be of those who believe, establish prayer, and pay zakat. All right, let's continue. Also, but now verse 20. Oops. Okay. Alladina amanu wa hajaru wa jahadu. Look at how, again, belief. Uh, because a, a believer is active. A believer is doing things. They're not just sitting around believing. That doesn't, our, our lives should reflect our belief. Alladina amanu wa hajaru wa jahadu fi sabili lahi bi amwalihim wa anfusihim. A'adhamu darajatan inda Allah wa ulaika hum al faizun. Those who believe, go on hijrah, strive in the cause of God, struggle in the cause of God with their money and their lives, are greater in rank in the sight of Allah. We have a greater degree. And it is those who are faizun, those who've really succeeded. Those who've really succeeded. So, again, it's just pounding it in. It's a, We want to believe. What do you need to go on hijrah from? Uh, do you have an addiction? Then you need to move away from that addiction. 
what do you are you what is the thing that you need to go on hijra from sometimes it's an internal hijra wajahadu fi sabilillah bi amwalihim wa anfusihim are you a volunteer do you volunteer somewhere do you volunteer at rabata do you volunteer at a local organization do you volunteer at a local humanitarian organization do you subhanallah every organization is doing good they all are doing important things Today I spoke on a local organization's fundraiser, Zakah, Z-A-K, they spell it differently, Z-A-C-A-H, I think they spell it. And um, I was thinking as I was, they're wonderful people, local people, doing a lot to help local Minnesota Muslims. And I was thinking as I was speaking there, what I, how blessed I am that there are people that have this kind of organization, so I can have my kind of organization, which is Rabata. Because we are all about building education, creative educational experiences, changing culture. If people need food, you can't talk about culture. You can't talk about writing a, a novel. You can't talk about changing the educational, the way we're learning about Islam. You can't talk about uplifting a people if they're hungry. And so all of our organizations are important. But are we, are we volunteering? Are we giving our money to all of these organizations? Are we supporting? Are we supporting? Because if we are, then we have really good news in this verse. The highest, the greatest degree with Allah. If we have these qualities. May Allah make us of those who believe, have hijrah, jahidu fi sabilillah, bi amwalihim wa anfusihim. Ya ameen, ameen. May Allah make us of these people. Now, in verse 24, there's, this is, this one really, this one should shake us a little bit, make us think and examine our hearts. Qul, say, In kana aba'ukum wa abna'ukum wa ikhwanukum wa azwajukum wa ashiratukum wa amwalun iqtaraftumuha wa tijaratun takhshawna kasadaha wa masakin tardawnaha أحب إليكم من الله ورسوله وجهاد في سبيله فتربصوا حتى يأتي الله بأمري والله لا يهدي القوم الفاسقين يا لطيف يا لطيف يا لطيف Say if your fathers, your sons, your brothers, your wife, your, if your parents, your children, your, your siblings, your spouses, your relatives, your wealth which you have obtained, your business which you fear might decline, your homes with which you are pleased with, if any of these things are more beloved to you than Allah and his messenger and struggling in his way, is scary. It's then wait, then, then sit in... Uh, like the, the criminal who is waiting to be sentenced. Then sit and wait for your sentence. Allah does not guide. Wallahu la yahdil qawm al fasiqeen. Allah doesn't guide the, the people who are fasiq, who are misguided, who are disobedient. As all of our love for our parents and our children and our all of our attachments to our money and our homes and our business, all of this, as much as it's normal and important, important. We know how much hadith, how many hadith are there that encourage us to love and be good to our parents. But still, all of that on one side. But what should be more is, uh, it should, should be more beloved. What should be more beloved is our love. Is it, more beloved to us should be Allah, His Prophet, and working in God's cause. So that volunteer work, that sadaqah that you give, is more beloved than your house. Yeah. Imagine. We have to be careful when we're, when we're wasting money on, you know, like children are, children ask for what, they're, what they get used to asking. And what I've learned in my 54 years is that a child who doesn't get everything they want is a happier adult and an easier person to get along with. And so I really want to encourage you not to give your kids everything, especially don't buy them junk. Just don't buy them junk. Just don't do it. And take that money that would go to that and give it in, in a cause. Find a cause you believe in. Find, Of course, I hope it's at Rabata. But what, find a cause you believe in and give that money there. 
I tell, I'm telling you, you're going to be happier. Your child is going to be happier. There's just no, there's no reason to, th to throw money away like that. We want, to, we, because we want this religion and this work to be ahabu ilayna, to be more beloved to us. And we prove that when we give, when we give our money, when we, when we think about this before thinking about uh, the people around us. One of my friends at, uh, my, actually a mentor of mine at the University of St. Thomas, she said to me one time, I've told my financial advisor to find me more money because I need to be able to give more money. And she wasn't thinking, I need to buy a better house. I need to build, you know, I need a nicer car. She said, how can I give more in sadaqah every month? How can I give more charity every month? Okay. So, let me see. Now... I think I should go a little bit more quickly because I'm running out of time a little bit. But if we go now to verse 34, 10 verses on, we start to see where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying where the problems lie. What happens? O oh, you who believed, indeed, many of the scholars and the monks devour the wealth of people unjustly and avert people from the way of God. They are those who hoard gold and silver and do not spend it in the way of Allah. So being stingy and hoarding money to ourselves not only is bad for us, it also prevents people from the path, especially for scholars and leaders. And this is also talking about early uh, monks and such, people that would just keep money that was given to the church for themselves. But we're learning from this. Allah SWT is teaching us. We don't want to hoard money. We want to use money for good. Also, verse 38 and 39 teaches us that when you are reluctant or hesitant to do good, this is also a problem. Ya amanu, ma lakum idha qila lakum infiru fi ila al-ard. What's wrong with you? Oh, you have believed. What's the matter with you? You're told, you're told to get up and go do something for Allah. And you become heavy on the earth. Ya Allah, dunya min al Do you love this world more than the next? فَمَا مَتَاعُ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا فِي الْآخِرَةِ إِلَّا قَلِيلٌ But what is, enjoying, what is enjoyable in this world is very little compared to the hereafter. We're being scolded here. We're being scolded here. And if you're, you're set, someone says, come, volunteer, come, do this good thing. Get up and help. Get up. And you're like, we're hoodie to the earth. We're being scolded. This is not the way we're supposed to be. Also, what about if we make excuses? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also doesn't approve of us making excuses. Only those who would ask permission of you who do not believe in Allah in the last day and whose hearts have doubted and they in their doubt are hesitating. When we hesitate to pray, when we hesitate to give zakat, we have to ask ourselves, do we not believe and know the blessing that will come? Do we not believe in the fuddled nature of zakat? Do we not believe? Do we not know? We have to ask ourselves so that we can, we can become of those who do not hesitate and do not make excuses. Speaking of which, if we go to verse 54, we find, ah, uh, so scary. وَمَا مَنَعَهُمْ أَن تُقْبَلَ مِنْهُمْ نَفَاقَاتُهُمْ إِلَّا أَنَّهُمْ كَفَرُوا بِاللَّهِ بِرَسُولِهِ وَلَا يَأْتُونَ الصَّلَاةِ so here we're talking about a description of those who disbelieved in Allah and His Messenger. They don't come to prayer except kusala means to be lazy, except in laziness. And they don't spend except for that they're unwilling. They, they're, they're hesitant. They don't want to spend money on, for Allah, I mean. This is, uh, yeah, let's see. May Allah make us of those who are energetic to pray and are excited to give our money in sadaqah and give our money in, uh, in zakat. 
Also, what we want to avoid is false oaths, verse 62, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, says, talks about um, uh, the people who, يَحْلِفُونَ بِاللَّهِ لَكُمْ لِيَرْضُوكُمْ People give an oath just to make you happy. But no. وَاللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَحَقُّ أَنْ يَرْضُوهُ إِنْ كَانُوا مُؤْمِنِينَ we want to please God and His Prophet, not people. Don't give oaths to people. Please God and His Prophet. Well, these are things we want to avoid. And finally, we can see on page 71, I'm sorry, not page, verse 71, what it should look like. What should this look like when it all comes together with our good qualities? Allah, Allah promises. <clears throat> Uh, sorry, 71, 71, sorry. Al the male and female believers. Ba'aduhum awliya ubahat. They are protectors, allies, one of another. Ya'muruna bil ma'aruf. Wayanhuna an al munkar. They push against what is they, they they embrace and bring forth and 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 build what is beautiful and push back against all that is ugly. وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةِ And they establish prayer. وَيُؤْتُونَ الزَّكَاةِ And they pay zakat. وَيُتِعُونَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولُهُ And they obey God and His Prophet. أُولَٰئِكَ سَيَرْحَمَهُمَ اللَّهِ These are the people who will get the glitter mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Glitter is my word, of course. إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَزِيزٌ حَكِيمٌ Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mighty, mighty and wise. And that is how we should be as believers, friends and allies, one to another, supporting each other and defining ourselves in these beautiful ways. That we are struggling in this wor world to bring what is good and to fight and push away what is bad. That we are people who establish prayer and zakat. We obey and are loyal to Allah and his messenger. And we stand without an umbrella waiting for the glitter mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Thank you very much. Always a pleasure. I'm enjoying these very much, enjoying being with you. And inshallah, I will see you tomorrow. Remember, if you haven't donated yet, go to, we have a launch good page, uh, rabata launchgood, launchgood.com forward slash rabata. And you can find us there. We're doing, alhamdulillah, we're at, I think, a little over 40% now. So I really would like to encourage you to head on over to launchgood.com and find the Rabata, uh, the Rabata campaign and donate. Give us a one-time donation for Ramadan and become of those who are so beautifully standing and waiting for this glitter mercy.